name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The people who first heard the words of this morning's gospel cared greatly about what it means to be holy. Holy. This is not a term we use much these days, especially about ourselves. We tend to focus on themes like self-fulfillment, personal happiness. We ask, how can I be thinner, or smarter, or richer, or a better parent, or a better golfer, or whatever? When was the last time you asked yourself, how can I become more holy? For men and women of biblical times, this was a central question of their life and worship. Maybe it's time to bring it back. To be holy is to be pure or perfect. It is to be so far above the ordinary or the profane that it creates a sense of awe or reverence. Certainly God is holy. <laughs> Moses was to take off his shoes at the burning bush because he was standing on holy ground in God's presence. And he was not to look at the face of God lest he be blinded by the brilliance of its purity. We speak of being in God's holy temple. Holiness is located in time and space in the place of worship. We know that feeling when we enter a beautiful place like Trinity Church. This is a holy place. The vessels of worship and the special vestments of priests we speak of holiness being set apart, suggesting purity. In the communion itself, we experience the real, holy presence of Christ. But it is equally true that we, you and I, are holy. In this morning's lesson, Paul speaks about our being the holy temple. Of course, most of the time we fall far short of being the holy people God created us to be. But nonetheless, we were created holy. So sometimes we try to create holiness by setting down rules and procedures that we think will please God. The Old Testament book of Leviticus is such an example. We heard some of that in the first lesson this morning. It is said that the Jews enumerated 613 laws, all of which would lead to holiness. Jews believe that the law itself is holy. But some get so tied up in not trying to follow all the rules that they forget the purpose in the first place. That's the problem. Today, Jesus is speaking to those who define the law too closely and become obsessed with following every jot and tittle. For Jesus, the law was quite simple and quite hard at the same time. Love God. Love man. It all boiled down to the law of love. Furthermore, Jesus is saying it's not just what shows on the outside that counts. It's what's on the inside that's just as important. So Jesus gives five examples of the old law and the new law that we read last week and this week. Murder. The old law says, thou shalt do no murder. But I say to you, if you are even angry, put aside what you are doing and go make things right. This is the law of love. Adultery. The old law says, thou shalt not commit adultery. But to be truly holy, 